Hello everyone, Lipnox VR. My name is Adam, and today I'm taking a look at Hitman 3 VR on the PlayStation 4, the base PS4 that is. I do not have the PS4 Pro, I don't have the PS5. So we're taking a look at that. Now, before I get into this, I will say a bit of a roller coaster ride, server issues, getting used to the controls. And I say that as someone that was probably the biggest advocate about them having PS Move support in this game which unfortunately it doesn't have, so we're stuck to the DualShock on this one. Which, once you get your camera aligned properly, isn't all that bad. It does take some getting used to though. Now I will say, I'm still hoping for that PlayStation Move update, but it's still usable right now, and it's a lot of fun, and I think in a lot of ways I could actually defend the controller choice. But let's get into it more in-depthly now. First, before we talk about anything else, let's, let's get to these controls. So, the first things first is camera placement. Now, normally my camera would be up here. Not good. It points down, works for pretty much every other VR game. But unfortunately, this light bar doesn't track so well with that. So... What we're going to be doing is moving this camera all the way down here. This cord is quite difficult. So there we go. And then when I'm sitting, imagine I'm sitting here, and there we go. So you want it basically where you're sitting, you want it right about chin level. So do it the chin level and then you're, you're good to go. That'll help you a lot of the problem. The other thing too is, if you're too far away, it's harder to track. So you kind of have to find this sweet spot, roughly, I guess, maybe five feet, maybe a meter and a half, depending on your mathematical system. So I would definitely say to do that to get everything working as best as it can. So how does it actually work? Well, because it's tracking with this and with the gyroscope, most of the actions you're Melee weapons, punching, things like that. You hold down the trigger, and you swipe. You go like that, go like this. Now most of the time, you're just gonna basically go knock them out, and you're good to go, or to punch them. That's pretty much the actions for that. If you try to get overly creative, it might look funny, it might be funny, but you're gonna run into issues, especially in more action-packed sequences. As for the other mechanism, with melee weapons, the throwing. Now you're gonna be holding the L2 to do the throwing, and you're just basically turning the controller to get that basically cursor to go over someone's head, and let go, and whoosh. I think it's let go, something like that. It, 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 it's quite obvious what you're supposed to be doing once you get used to it, but definitely recommend that method. It's throwing melee weapons is probably your best bet in the game. So, Going beyond that though, we have the fiber wire. And I'll be honest, the fiber wire was the one that gave me the most issue. Because I guess I should have realized this in the flat screen game, you can't really just fiber wire anyone. You kind of have to sneak up behind them to fiber wire them. So in VR, you're kind of like, oh, I'll just go behind them and choke them and it's all good. And when you do the actual choking, you see the hand come up and you, you know when to press the button and you're good to go. With the fiber wire, you don't have that luxury, so you really have to make sure you're sneaking behind them. Now, a trick I found was when you get behind someone, if you just duck for like a second and unduck, it puts you in that sneaky stance and you're good to go. So, I highly recommend doing that. So, that basically covers the majority of the controls, except for the gunplay. Gunplay is basically like it is in the London Heist or Blood and Truth and things with DualShock. You're just turning the controller to sort of aim your gun. You can half hold the trigger button to get like a laser pointer thing. So that works nicely. Now, where it doesn't work nicely is when we get into the sniper. Or the camera also uses this method. Where it basically wants you to hold the gun up to your face. And then it goes into a flat screen other mode to see the sniper zoom and it it looks weird and, and maybe it makes sense but 
I found it quite awkward to use, the camera especially. But even with the sniper, when you're trying to like look overly down, it just it does not work for you. So I think the sniper maybe uses some needs some work, maybe some tweaking. I honestly, those sniper challenge levels, which unfortunately aren't unlocked in VR, that'd be a great use of the aim controller. That could be possible. But we'll get into that later. So that's the gist of the controls in terms of the actual motion controls, otherwise you're just using the standard looking around thing. A lot of the commands are turned off, but you can press up on the D-pad to see, you know, your instinct mode, but it's far reduced in the VR mode. You're not seeing the outline, you're just seeing little white dots above heads or the red icon where your targets are. So it's not a huge, huge thing, but it does help. So moving on past the controls though, I want to get into what the content actually is. And if you have all three games, it's odd because a lot of the content other than the story missions is not playable in VR. So the Patient Zero stuff from Hitman 1 and any of the es escal uh, escalation missions are just, they're not there except for on Hitman 3, which is kind of weird. But it, for the earlier missions, you're basically you're getting the story and that's it. So you can redo the missions from different starting locations to get all the challenges, but it's always going to be the same targets. It's always going to be the same for that. So except that is that. Now it still means you're given the tutorial levels, which there's technically a VR tutorial, but I'm not going to count that. But there's still two tutorial missions, which are decent size that are playable in VR. And you know what? They're, they're quite enjoyable to play. They are small, but they're still fun levels. Then you have six levels in Hitman 1, six levels in Hitman 2, and in Hitman 3 we have six levels. I will say one of the six levels in Hitman 3 is very linear and not very much like Hitman at all. So I kind of don't like that level and it's a low point in the trilogy for sure for me. But in terms of the levels with Hitman 1, the six levels you got there, they all work great in VR. There's a couple glitch issues. The hotel level, for example, when you go sliding down that pole thing, sometimes it doesn't do it properly when you go over the ledge and you can actually like get into the out of bounds area. I don't remember if you could do that in the flat screen one, but it definitely happened more than once to me. So that should be noted. It's not the end of the world, but if you get stuck over there, you're stuck. So if you do glitch that way, do be careful not to overly adventure or risk losing your current progress. Because as soon as you get over there, you're not getting back over. So that save file, you either need to load something or whatever. And I actually think that of the three games, the Hitman 2 levels are my favorite because you get a lot more of these streets and open areas and you know, the I would say, while Hitman 1 does have several really, really good relaxing type areas, I think Hitman 2 just takes takes the cake because, you know, you got Miami, you got that level with the hippo, and it's just the castle. I love the castle. The castle's amazing. So, oh, I'm not, what am I saying? The subdivision one. I love the subdivision one. And these are all awesome levels to just hang out in VR. I think for Hitman 3, kind of misses the mark for me on that regard because the areas are so open sometimes that because it's the VR and because of how the details are, a lot of the more in-depth details are kind of lost. I will say, you know, Berlin, or not Berlin, Dubai, the first level Dubai, a lot of the beauty of it is definitely lost so i would say for that one and and the uh the house the man whatever the, the detective one the second level those ones i would check them out in flat screen mode because they look so much better in that but in terms of vr they're still good but the details are a little bit lacking the other levels though my experience in vr was a lot better there was a couple times like the forest that it doesn't have such a great look but it's okay. And, and going back to the Hitman 2 in Miami, 
There's a spot where you like hide under this, uh, I don't know if it's like a little elevator or a little garage shaft thing. And your screen just goes black when you go in there. And there's a few other times that I was like hiding under a, on a ledge and it went black. I forget what level that was that happened in. So that's a concern, but it's, it's no big deal. So in terms of the, I guess, six, six, six plus two DLC plus. So of the 22 levels, a majority are really, really good in VR. And aside from the tutorial levels being kind of small, the first level of Hitman 2 being kind of small, and the final level in Hitman 3 being just what it is, it's a pretty good package when you have all three of them. If you're only getting Hitman 3 though, kind, kind of lacking. So if you didn't get the first two games on sale, I would maybe wait until you can get all three at once and do the whole package because Hitman 3 just by itself, it's, it's, it's lacking overall for me at least when you consider that giant price tag, especially if you're only playing in VR. Now there is a lot of challenge things, so I mean you can get your money's worth out of these, no doubt about that, but if you're not a hardcore into Hitman, you're probably going to run into issues getting your money's worth in that situation. Moving on to the graphics though. It's blurry on flat screen PS4, like most PSVR games are on that hardware. I don't think it's as blurry as Skyrim, but after playing a lot of the Oculus Quest and PC VR and stuff, it's definitely noticeable. So keep that in mind. I'm not saying it ruined my experience at any time, but it's definitely noticeable. And the other thing is the pop-in. There's even times that you sort of move towards things and chairs just sort of come out of nowhere. Uh, you could be using a gun and aiming down the sight and something that is basically blocking you from shooting, you can't actually see that it's there. Another thing too is that if you throw an object and it's too far away, like the phone for example, I threw it, it didn't do anything, I walked down to the area, once I was just in enough the vicinity, it then exploded. So keep that in mind as well because that's that. Oops, sorry about that. But uh, that's that. In terms of overall, again, Hitman 1 and 2, I feel like the levels look better, but it's still all good. And you know what? Like that nightclub, when you go down there, it's pretty awesome. I will say the lighting effects are basically gone entirely in terms of some of the fog and things like that when you go into VR, but it still looks nice. I'm hoping for a PC VR port down the road though to add some of that stuff back in. On to audio, it's amazing. The audio, I have only one minor complaint and that that is again in the club level. When some of the people were talking, you could not hear them over the music. I guess that's realistic, but I don't think it was intended that way. It does that club area though, it pounds really good in your ears though, and there is great 3D sound in this game, so you can hear enemies all around you. That's no issue at all. On to the story. You know what? Hitman 2 pretty much just had little like I think it was like a slideshow for the cutscenes. So Hitman 2 definitely dropped the ball in terms of storytelling in that regard. Hitman 3 rectifies that with really good engaging cutscenes and a storyline that definitely is all pieced together and you know it's it's cookie cutter but it's enjoyable I'm not going to spoil the ending but it definitely gives you a cinematic thing and considering the team is working on James Bond next in a lot of ways it feels like some of this game is them you know maybe even showing that they can do this kind of stuff even more than anything else. I will say the story honestly doesn't matter that much because for me the overall story isn't that big a deal. It's the individual stories that are happening in each level that are the most exciting and most interesting to me and discovering all of them. So I definitely would say to look for that. But on to my conclusion basically. I've been playing the game constantly since it came out. I love the game. 
And you know what? I've had disconnects from the server issue. I've had crashing. The day one was madness trying to transfer your progression. But I kind of feel like those issues are not really going to continue going further as, you know, less people are playing, you're going to have less server issues, people aren't tra transferring the progression like crazy anymore, so that's not going to be an issue anymore. So while they did extremely frustrate me in the opening, at all said and done, it's not a huge, huge issue. I would definitely recommend saving before completing levels, like right before the ending of a level, if you're worried about this kind of stuff, because you will have times that it just refuses to connect to the network and whatever progress you made in that level is down the toilet. And if you spend an hour doing a level, you know what, that actually really frustrates you because you need to spend a long time doing the level and you want to get all the unlockables because the unlockables make a huge difference to the gameplay. Yeah, if you want to get the tools to be able to do what you want to do in each level, you have to beat the level properly, you have to get the side things, you have to find all the little secrets, and that takes a long time. Moving on beyond that though, if I'm going to conclude this, I love the game. I can't stop playing the game. Everyone that seems to be playing the game, for the most part, enjoys it. I think there's a lot of people that are not understanding the control scheme, and that's a big issue. But. I think if you follow the advice that I gave at the start of the video, you're not going to have that issue. The one thing I will say, I wish, I wish that they would give you an option to hide the grid. Maybe, you know, still show the camera when you have that issue, the thing, but don't show me the whole grid because it completely takes me out of this experience. And a lot of the time it's just me looking to the left. I'll be like looking over here and it's like, oh, there's the grid. And it just, I mean, this is supposed to be a VR game, right? So. I think the grid needs to go away. I think the server issues suck. But if I ignore the smaller nitpicks and really settle into what I'm playing, this is a full PlayStation 4 game. Three four PlayStation 4 games in full VR. There is so much to do. There's so much content, so many challenges, so many weapons, so many ways to play the levels. And I think for myself, that's where it wins. I did mention the level six, and I don't want to spoil things, but whereas every other level lets you just openly explore the levels, level six is just a linear trek forward. You don't get to bring your own items. You don't get to do anything. And I just, it takes away everything about being playing Hitman for me. So I don't even count that as being a level, which is why I say you really want to have those other two games because otherwise you're looking at five levels and you know what? You can definitely redo those levels, find out all the mission stories, do all the challenges, and you can get your money's worth out of it, but it is still a full price game. And if you're not going to play this game seriously as a Hitman person, you just want to go through and beat the levels you're not going to get your money's worth unless you have all three sets. So that's that. I don't know much else I could say with this beyond sort of going more in depth with each level, but I don't think we need to do that. I think the reality is if you have a PlayStation VR and you're dying to play Hitman in VR, do it. But for most people, I think you might want to wait until things are on sale. You might want to wait until things are being patched so the server issues aren't happening. And like I said, there's small little issues here and there, especially graphical. Uh, the fifth level, for example, you know, they're, the suits are like bleeding into each other. Like the one of the, the assassination girl, she's wearing a gold suit and a blue suit at the same time, and they're like glitching into each other. And some of the. Uh, vineyard people are wearing a suit under their like regular attire and it just it's weird it looks sloppy so that is definitely an issue i will say also that control scheme definitely get used to using it but i'm not gonna throw a review score on this i think you should definitely get it if you like this but i'm 
I'm not sure what else to say on that. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here.